Now this was a really interesting roof for us to be able to demonstrate how we can do electronic testing of a roof to find if there's water inside it. We already know that this roof is a warm roof and there is 100 millimeters of insulation underneath us. We chalk line out a grid over the top of this and this will be the basis of our moisture map. We'll be able to reference any one particular square inside this area at, on a drawing at a later stage. The moment we're going over this, taking readings and, and drawing the, the details on the roof. Now we can do this on this roof because we know that this roof is actually going to be stripped at some time. But I'm just using this roof at the moment so that I can show you the process that we'd go through, even if we weren't stripping it, just so that we can come up with the moisture map. Now, now we'll walk over the roof two or three different times changing the sensitivity of the electronic testing equipment so that we can build up a really detailed map of where we think the moisture is. Now we're going to go around on this particular roof and we're going to mark this in big round circles on the roof. Again we normally wouldn't do this, we'd normally go away to the office and do a report uh, and then show the customer exactly where we've identified there is moisture. However in this instance we know the roof's being stripped as I said before and we can actually do this on the roof. So previously we marked this particular area because we found that the, the equipment was showing us that there is moisture underneath it. So what we thought we'd do now is we'd see if we can define that to a smaller area by adjusting the equipment, uh, getting it much more sensitive to see if we can define a much smaller area. And we'll mark that smaller area with a circle so that when we strip the roof of the roof covering, hopefully we should be able to see how accurate the machine is at locating moisture. What it's actually doing is sending a small electrical signal into the roof. It's bouncing off any moisture which is down below and coming back up giving us our reading. Some of these areas are going right off of the scale and some aren't. So we'll mark this with another circle. So you can clearly see the grid that we've marked on here. There's one meter square grids on here and we've marked those from A to F, no A to G and from one to six here. So we can refer to any particular one uh, when we do a moisture map on this. However, at the moment, this is the only one that we're really interested in. This is the one that I've been showing you so far with the two circles in it. We're going around now prepping the roof, getting ready to rip everything up and we're going to start on this left hand corner which is A1 and A2. I think I should tell you a little bit about this roof and what we know about it so far. We know that it's a brand new roof only put down about three days beforehand and it rained about a day before we got here even though at the moment the temperature is quite warm it's around about 18 degrees 17 18 degrees outside um, so all the water has evaporated off the top however the owner of the property came up after it had rained and walked over the roof and although it was dry on the top as he walked over the roof he noted that there was some water squelching underneath it indicating that some water had got past the actual membrane itself. This is a liquid applied membrane and when I was asked to come out and have a look at it I did some tests on it and found that sure enough there was some water underneath it. This is why we came back and we've started this. We, we made the decision long ago that this roof should be stripped. Now just look here this is exactly where the two circles are. Keep your eye on this because once the two circles have gone off the top of it um, we're now trying to we, we won't be, have a reference to see exactly where it is wet underneath it but it is actually on a line of where the insulation is joined the insulation slabs are 1.6 by 600 by about 120 mil deep I do believe on this particular uh, job so as Bob starts to lift this particular piece up we get to see and this is right underneath where the the two circles are and we get to see if there is water underneath this particular part I'll put a link below to another video talking about how this insulation is actually glued down. But as you can see, as this comes out now, yeah, I put my hand on the back of this and you can see there's dry areas and wet areas where it's stuck to the, the old roof, which is underneath it. And <clears throat> when I pull this area, this one out, again, you know, absolutely perfect example of this is exactly where our two circles were and the water was indicated 
by the equipment. So let's just think about all the information we've got on this roof. We know that it leaked in places, but we didn't know exactly where. We know that the new liquid system put on top of it wasn't put on very well. The, the leak that we've just shown you is actually on the high point of the roof. This is uh, the top end. The water runs towards the chimney stack, which is down the other end. The leak is also over an area where the insulation has been joined with a small slither. Is there any particular um, reason why we would have a leak at that particular point? All of these we don't really know, but they're all, they're all good observations. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact me. Speak soon. Thank <laughs> you.